Welcome to our session today called Action Driven Service Request Catalog within ServiceNow. My name is Roderick de Guzman and I'm the head of pre sales and solution architecture for Innovise ESM. In this session, we'll discuss the challenges that many organizations face as they de further deploy their service request catalog and they add more and more request items. What they find is that this causes usability issues and an increased admin overhead. One of the approaches that we'll discuss today is the ability for ServiceNow to be able to simplify your structure of your service request catalog without necessarily sacrificing the usability and functionality. And how do we go about doing this is applying what we refer to as an action-based configuration for your service request catalog rather than item-driven one. And this, is, this can be achieved without necessarily deploying and using CMS, which is the content management application within ServiceNow. And the benefit of taking this approach is that it reduces the administration overhead of maintaining your service request catalog, irregardless of how many request items you may have. And it actually enhances the end user experience. Now in front of you on your screen is the out-of-the-box service request catalog from ServiceNow which also shows some of the service request categories and also the request items that are available out of the box. Now many of us prefer to use or at least initially the out-of-the-box service request catalog look and feel which is what you can see in front of your screen and for actually many of us this is an actual good starting point point. and in most cases we wouldn't have at this point or even for day one considered deploying the content management application uh, which is also known as the CMS and I'll show you what that actually looks like if you haven't seen it before um, so this is using the CMS application uh, to then show you uh, a different look and feel as to how your service request catalog could look like uh, and in this case you could either click on areas like something is broken, ask a question status and also get access to your service request catalog um, from a specific menu as well. So in, in many cases uh, for a lot of organizations uh, they wouldn't have deployed the CMS application at this point and have chosen to use the out of the box look and feel um, in regards to providing the service request catalog to their end users via employee self-service. Now the challenge is that as we start to introduce request items specifically for our organization and in due time as we keep adding more and more of these items we start to experience issues in regards to end user experience and usability and also administration overhead as well. And what we mean by that is we've created one here called desktop management item driven just to simplify that point in regards to how could those challenges and issues arise. Is that for desktop management you may actually have four actions that are possible within that service offering that you're providing to your end users and they could be decommission, move, new and replacement desktop. Now what you actually may end up doing is creating a request item for each possible action. Now we have seen this uh, before in many organizations where in IT organizations we, we tend to have a tendency to define our service request catalog from an inside out perspective not necessarily taking into consideration uh, the, the end user experience which is fairly key when you're deploying a service request catalog. So as you can imagine if you have four here for desktop management as more and more items are introduced to your service request catalog uh, in due time submitting a request will become tedious and a confusing process for your end users. They will also be expected to browse 
various forms and perform numerous clicks just to submit a simple request. And in addition, what you will find is that the administrative overhead in maintaining your ServiceNow platform will increase due to the high number of request items if your service request catalog becomes and, and remains to be item driven. With those challenges in mind, one of the approach that we will show you in this session is how to configure an action driven service request catalog. And the objective of this approach is to essentially simplify the catalog structure, but at the same time enhance the end user experience and to also minimize the administration overhead of your ServiceNow platform. Now, if we use our earlier example of desktop management, uh, in that example, we showed that uh, in regards to an item driven configuration, you may find yourself configuring four separate request items uh, in regards to one for decommission, one for move, one for new, and one for replace. In an action driven configuration, what you could essentially do is, uh, in this case, we've created an example, have a single request item. So from an end user perspective, I only need to I only have one option in this case uh, as a landing page that I go in ahead and click on desktop PCs. And as I go ahead and complete that request, the first thing that I am asked to provide as an input is then to select a service or what we refer to as an action. In this case, I can select decommission, move, new and replace. And what you could do within ServiceNow is to dynamically uh, ask specific information from the end user as you select uh, these actions. So in this case for the commission, you can ask for asset IDs and location or pre-populate them from uh, your asset portfolio or configuration management database uh, within ServiceNow. Also if you then select on move, uh, it can then ask you for more information in regards to a to location or if there's uh, additional assets that need to be moved. Uh, and also you can, uh, for a new desktop, again, because you, you, you may have a standard operating environment, uh, then then have a choice, but in this case, uh, you might ask them to uh, have additional questions in regards to, you know, uh, do you need Office XP or additional software or what have you. Um, and then you've also got one for replace as well. Now, I'm not sure if you could tell that we can also dynamically show the delivery target time and this is an actual SLA in the system uh, and and what we've done here is that you can actually then relate an SLA not just for a particular request item but an actual action within that request item so uh, and the blog that this session is, uh, is written on it actually specifies what needs to be configured in order to be able to do this uh, but essentially we've managed to relate an actual SLA to an action within a single request item typically out of the box you would have to relate a single SLA to a single request item um, in that sense so the good thing about this is you know we've got a an SLA target uh, for decommission and in this case it updates to five days uh, so you're managing the expectation of the end user. The moment you select on move, you then uh, managing the expectation and you're saying the delivery target time for that uh, request uh, and for that action uh, to move a desktop PC is three days and so on um, and so forth. So the solution uh, for all this is uh, some of the key areas of configuration uh, has been noted uh, within the blog itself. So please read uh, the actual article in regards to the client script, uh, certain tables that uh, you need to kind of consider in regards to uh, the SLA banding for each of the actions. Uh, we've also included some snapshots of some scripts in regards to UI macros and uh, certain changes you need to make for the UI page. And one of the old, so critical things that we've shown in the blog is a sample workflow uh, that is, you know, this is a workflow for a particular request item. And the key thing here is being able to use a, uh, a switch action, which then allows you to route 
the specific uh, route to the specific required step uh, based on the action selected uh, for the request. So as you can see, this approach helps reduce the number of request categories and request items down to a manageable level while enhancing the end user experience and at the same time uh, also drive the overall service efficiency by using a single workflow uh, for that request item but just ensuring that you, you use a switch uh, action um, and again we, we as I stated uh, we do provide just a, a quick snapshot of what a particular workflow may look like um, so feel free to to read up on the blog uh, that this session is is associated to so taking this approach it's just, it can essentially transform your service request catalog to take a more outside-in perspective uh, which is definitely more beneficial to your organization um, but by all means this isn't the only aspect you know one must consider to ensure that the end user is kept in mind at all times uh, but at least you're definitely one step closer in achieving that um, with ServiceNow. So hopefully this has been uh, this has given you guys insight in regards to different approaches you could take or a particular approach you could take to enabling your service request catalog to become more action driven uh, rather than item driven. So thank you for your time and I hopefully you enjoyed this session. Thank you.